Uh, well, we know Deshaun Watson will be traded at some point. Now, the legal situation is pending. That could certainly influence the timeline, but I think most people still expect Deshaun to be traded at some point between now and the NFL draft. Laramie Tunsil is another name we've talked about on this show. Texans probably don't want to pay him a high cap number. He might not want to be here. You might be able to get a late first-round pick, definitely a second-round pick for Tunsil. So those are the two obvious ones. But how about this for another name? Mike Gennetti of Spot Track was on the bench this morning, and he was asked about the Texans' cap situation, and he mentions a surprise name here that we got to talk about. <clears throat> From a dead cap standpoint, look, we just had the, the Los Angeles Rams win the Super Bowl with the fourth-highest dead cap and the most cap allocated to quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. So I, I don't think anybody's really too worried about taking on dead cap, especially in this kind of bridge situation that the Texans are in with Nick Casario. So I think going backwards makes a little bit of sense, financially speaking. And uh, I think, I think you know, the Watson trade, the Tunzel trade, maybe a Brandon Cooks trade, they're, they're kind of inevitable at this point. He thinks a Cooks trade's going to happen based on that. Now, we've talked about Watson. We've talked about Tunzel. I can't for the life of me understand why they'd want to move Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks has been traded a bazillion times in his career. He has already said he wants to be here. He has already said that he'd like to not be traded once again. I mean, he's played in the NFL for a long time, yet you look at his age, he's going into his age 29 season, so he's still young enough. He's still in his prime. He's really productive. I like to say he's quarterback proof because it doesn't matter who's throwing him the ball in his career. He still finds a way to go over 1,000 yards. He's not being paid that much money, right? His cap hit for this year is $16 million. If you want to find out what you have in Davis Mills, I wouldn't trade your best offensive weapon in Brandon Cooks. I'd keep him for another year and find out what Davis Mills could do. Why take away his best weapon just so you can clear some cap space? Cooks and Mills worked pretty well, and you would think that if at some point it becomes extremely apparent through the actions of this organization that Davis Mills is going to be the guy at the quarterback spot, that Cooks and Mills would get even deeper in their connection with starting quarterback and best wide receiver on the team. You mentioned a bunch of different things about Brandon Cooks and how he's desired to be here and he didn't want to be traded, uh, which was a comment that he made a couple of years ago with this organization. The only way I could see this going down is if the Texans felt like he is standing in the way of a young stud wide receiver progressing, but my argument would be, I kind of want Brandon Cooks there to show him the ropes. This is the last year of his contract. I mean, it's not like you're getting some sort of king's ransom right. for Brandon Cooks. Yeah, if they were going to trade Brandon Cooks, they should have done it at the deadline because he would have gotten more in return for Brandon Cooks because, well, the team trading for him would have had Cooks for a year and a half instead of just a year. So once Cooks was here beyond the deadline, I just kind of assumed, all right, he's going to play out the rest of his contract here. And, yeah, I, I don't know who that young stud wide receiver is that Brandon Cooks is blocking. I mean, yeah, they've got Nico Collins on the team. I think they should draft another receiver this year, but this is in the old days in the NFL where you only have two wide receivers on the field at all times. Uh, you can have Nico Collins on the field. You can have day two draft pick on the field with Brandon Cooks. And, yeah, those guys can learn from Brandon Cooks as well. So, yeah, look, when you have a young quarterback in this league, Jake, it feels like you should be doing whatever you possibly can to make life easier for him. And having Brandon Cooks, we saw that in the last six games with Davis Mills this past season, having a really good wide receiver makes life a whole hell of a lot easier. Having a go-to guy who you can bank on to get open more often than not makes life a whole hell of a lot easier for a young quarterback. So if you really want Davis Mills to develop and you really want to see what you have with him, I think you keep Brandon Cooks around so he's got that true number one wide receiver. The caveat would be if a team blows you away with an offer, but are you really going to be getting a first-round pick No, for Brandon Cooks? You didn't even trade a first-round pick for Brandon Cooks. Right. So You're this, not getting a second-round pick either, which is what you traded for. I, I mean, maybe you could get a second-round pick from a team that's desperate. Like, if the Jets call you, they got two picks in the second round. I think they'd give you the 35th or the 38th pick in the draft. I don't know if I'm taking that, though. I like Brandon Cooks. I want to give Davis Mills a legitimate chance this year. I'm not trading away the best weapon on the team for just a second-round pick. If someone blows you away with an offer, yeah. maybe that changes the conversation. But you're not going to get that for a guy who's going to be 29 this year, going into the final year of his deal. You're much better off just keeping him. He's a Jack Easterby guy. He loves Jack. He loves Nick. Keep him around for another year and find out what Davis Mills is by giving him a really good player and Brandon Cooks to throw to. Well, you don't need the money that's freed up by moving Brandon Cooks either. I mean, if they trade Deshaun Watson, which we all believe they will, and if they trade Laramie Tunsil, which is certainly a possibility, then the Texans are sitting with about $53.5 million in cap space. That's more than enough money for Nick Casario to go shopping, 
spend on a couple of things that he couldn't or shouldn't have spent on last year and still do some of the roster filling out that he needs to do yep. in free agency. It's not like this team is in desperate need of cap salvation and they've got to jettison a player that is a really good player for them. Like I think it's really important to ca put the caveat that Brandon Cooks is probably the best offensive player on the team once Laramie Tunsil gets traded. That would not be the case on the new team that he goes to. Brandon Cooks is probably one of the, I don't know, seven or eight good best offensive yeah. players that he goes to on the new team. But he's really good for the Houston Texans, and he's really useful for the Houston Texans, whereas I don't know that he's that useful for another team. And I feel like he's a big culture guy, too. I know we kind of laugh and scoff at that word around here because we've heard it a million times from the three jabronis over the last couple of years, but he's bought in. Like Outside of that one tweet, Brandon Cooks has been very defensive of the Texans organization, and he's talked multiple times about wanting to stay here. So, look, I don't think he's untradeable. I think you bring up a good point, Jake. If somebody makes a great offer for Brandon Cooks, you should get rid of him. Uh, he's got one year left on his deal. He's going to be 29. It's not like you're competing for a championship this year. If you would like a playoff-ready, win-now roster going into next season, then, okay, keep Brandon Cooks. But if you can get a pretty good draft pick or two for that guy, okay, like I would listen to that. I'm not immediately saying no if anybody calls and asks if Brandon Cooks is available, but I do think he has a lot of value on this team, and I do think he has a lot of value to the most important person on your team, which, once Deshaun Watson is traded, will be Davis Mills. Yeah, good for Davis Mills if Cook sticks around for another year. Good for Nico Collins, who is set to be your number two wide receiver for this team. And the potential that the Texans, with nine current draft picks and more coming in a Deshaun Watson trade and more potentially coming in a Laramie Tunsil trade, the potential for the Texans to take a wide receiver in this draft is pretty high, and I want that yeah. guy to learn from Brandon Cooks. Well, the other option, too, you keep him. Let's say your team's awful next year. Davis Mills is not any good. You could try and trade him at the deadline. Sure. You could do that and maybe still get something for him rather than lose him for nothing. But at least go into next year giving Davis Mills the best weaponry possible. And this is a guy that's gone over a thousand year a thousand yards, excuse me, and both the seasons here in Houston. The Texans got a lot of problems. Brandon Cooks is not one of them. He's yeah. a good player. If you look at the quarterbacks he's played with in his career, whether it's Drew Brees, Tom Brady, Jared Goff, Deshaun Watson, Tyrod Taylor, Davis Mills, this guy doesn't it doesn't matter who's throwing the ball. This guy goes out there and always produces, always goes over 1,000 yards, and it always is a really reliable receiving target for, a, a, in this case, a young quarterback to throw the ball to. It's kind of unfortunate Brandon Cooks gets lobbed in with Deshaun Watson and Laramie Tunsil because Deshaun Watson has obviously the off-the-field issues and doesn't want to play for this team. And mm -hmm. if you believe some of the things that we've said about Laramie Tunsil, they have to yeah. basically convince this guy and beg him to practice when he was healthy, and then he just bailed on the team after he got hurt. And then Brandon Cooks has been model citizen with at the exception of one tweet. Right, after Mark Ingram got <laughs> yeah. traded last year. Yeah, look, part of me wants both of these guys, right? Laramie Tunsil and Brandon Cooks, because they're both really good players. And I talked about it a couple of minutes ago. You want to make life as easy as possible for your young quarterback. The thing is, I know Brandon Cooks wants to be here. I don't know if Tunsil wants to be here. You can't have him quitting on the team. Like, I know yeah. it's become a tradition in this city to pay guys to not play. You don't want to do that. You would like to avoid that situation if possible, and you don't want a bad culture guy when you have a new coach in there. So if Laramie Tunsil doesn't want to be here, then, yeah, you got to get rid of that guy and get something in return for him. I don't have those questions about Brandon Cooks. That guy is going to deliver week in and week out. 713-780. ESPN is the phone number. Let's squeeze in a phone call here. Let's go to Austin in Cyprus. He wants in on the Brandon Cooks conversation. Austin, thanks for making the call. You're on the wheelhouse. Hey, appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Big fan of y'all. Love your uh, content. Love y'all. Listen to y'all talk. Uh, so I just had a quick question. I mean, obviously, like kind of like what y'all said, like if you're blown away by a, by a Cook's trade offer and it's just like insane, you know, kind of like you can't say no to that, then obviously trade him. But let's say, for instance, uh, same, time, uh, same time around this year, he's not trading, still was with the Texans the whole year. Should you all resign him? Like, should we resign him? You know, would you want to do that? I mean, at, at what number is kind of acceptable? Because obviously we're a rebuilding team. Uh, you know, hopefully in the future we're going to have to re-sign, you know, some good players that we found uh, through the draft or through free agency. But, like, you know, would, should we re-sign Brandon Cooks if, it's, uh, if we're at this point uh, this time next year? Austin, thank you for the call. Well, Brandon Cooks signed a five-year, $81 million contract with the Rams ahead of the 2017 season. All right, so this is a guy, or ahead of, excuse me, the 
I guess it'd be the 2018 season he signed that deal. So you're not going to have to pay him that because he's an older player. But if you could get him in that, you know, 15 to $18 million range, that's pretty good money for a reliable, you know, probably more of a really good number two, but a low end number one receiver. So if he plays well again for you this year and Davis Mills is the guy, then yeah, I think you definitely resign the dude. Well, I mean, look, look, the guaranteed money and he'd be pretty low for me on any sort of contract. Brandon Cooks, wide receivers age far better than running backs do, so it's not like it's some cardinal sin to pay a wide receiver, especially him because he's got a history of not missing games. Like the Correct. guy, is, the guy's really durable. Um, I don't think it's totally out of the question that if he's having a successful season with Davis Mills and it looks like Davis Mills might be the guy, I don't think it's out of the question that you even have those conversations in season next year to maybe keep him around, depending on what you do with this draft upcoming, what your wide receiver roster. I'm not totally going to rule out Brandon Cooks like, okay, it's free agency, he gone. Like, I don't know, that's, that's not really a, uh, a way to look at it. But let's see how 2022 plays out before we start talking about 2023 with Brandon Cooks. Yeah, if he has another good year and the chemistry is there with Davis Mills and it looks like those two guys are inseparable and you're buying into Davis Mills beyond next season, then absolutely, I would want Brandon Cooks back. But yeah, it feels like something that we need to judge throughout the course of this next season and then make a decision after that. 713-780-ESPN is the number. As always, you can reach us on Twitter at Jake Asman at Cody underscore Stutes and at Brad Kellner. Make sure you follow the station at ESPN 975.